Hello and welcome everyone to our next webinar and I'm very happy to welcome Loran Völke. Have, very welcome. Yeah. Hi Markus, Loran. nice Hi. to see you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you as well. And yeah, you are the expert from us for the topic energy harvesting. And yeah, topic today, devices powered from energy harvesting. I'm very excited what it is about and how you can harvest energy, what you can do with it, what applications you can do. Yeah, um, but I think we will all hear that from you. So some quick information from my side in the beginning. You are all, uh, so you will be muted today, but if you have any questions, you can just tell us the, uh, the questions with the chat function and you can find that in the control panel. And if we can't answer all your questions today, we will answer them afterwards, but yeah, uh, so you will get all your answers. So then I think enough from my side at the beginning. Lorand, stage is yours, have fun. Thank you so much, Marcus. Hello everyone, my name is Laurent. Um, I'm working like a field application engineer as well and I'm really enthusiastic for energy harvesting application. And if you talk about energy harvesting application, the thing is that mostly when, when you talk and you think about energy application, you think it is energy for free. Somehow that's true. You have a non-electrical form of energy which you catch and you use a transducer to make electrical energy for that. You have multiple possibilities. You can use vibration with your piezo element. You can use a thermal generator if you have temperature differences. Um, you can use movement, of course, uh, make an inductive harvester. You can use photovoltaic panels, small solar panels is also the most used one. The thing is that um, by today, if you buy some new device, even if it's just a coffee machine, you will see that you have the possibility to buy a coffee machine which have a app function, you have a Wi-Fi module on it, and you can control your coffee machine from your mobile phone. Coffee machine must be wired. This is not a problem. You can make it smart. But how about if you want to have a, I don't know, something like a sensor for measuring the outside temperature or the wind speed or somewhere where you cannot put additional wire or you are terrible to bring some another wire for uh, have access to grid. So in this case, you will use maybe Wi-Fi and the solution in first step, it will be a battery powered. The thing is, if you put like a small sensor for your meteorological station and you put that on the roof of your house, um, after a while you have to climb there and you change the battery. This is not something good, especially when it's happening in winter, when it's snow on it. And Actually, we don't want to change the battery, but we want to have this extra sensor working. And by the way, when it's wind there, they have a small wind movement. You have a turbine which is generating electricity. Why you should not use this sensing also for generating enough electricity to power your sensor node? Or anyways, outside you have a solar panel possibility to put there to power himself this sensor and you don't need to change the battery. This is just one of the applications which is just right now in my mind. But you have multiple possibilities to do energy harvesting. If you think by today, there are much more applications already existing on the market where are using energy harvesting. One of them is to like, like uh, the railways. The railways, you can imagine if you will put every sector which is monitored using wires, it will be a lot of wire need and a lot of maintenance on this wire. And when the train is passing this uh, sector, you can use the energy from this train just pushing some uh, transducer which is generate electricity and you make a wireless networks there and you can power by just by passing the train, the sector. As well, the uh, tire pressuring monitoring system. Right now, the standard version are using this, this ventil battery uh, stuff, which after latest three, four years is empty. But how about if you buy already the rim, which is inside of the rim, already the tire pressuring monitoring sensor, which doesn't need to be recharged or doesn't need to be changed because when your rims is used, it's used and also the 
battery is not inside, it has also energy harvesting generator. By using some smart wearables where you want to measure your temperature of your body, you want to command your uh, MP3 player or mobile phone, whatever, you could use also false battery, but this is not a good option. Maybe it's important to try to use wearables which can harvest your energy from your uh, body, like temperature, or energy while during your moving. And all this is possible to do today by using standard devices from, from just buy it from, from stock, from, from a distributor, or just use by yourself uh, from direct from, from manufacturer. Current solution, when you have vibration, you can use with a low amplitude but high frequency vibration. You can try to use this kind of different piezo elements. There are different sizes and different manufacturers who can supply piezo elements for, for the market. The thing is, it's quite not so cheap, they are quite expensive, but sometimes it's also a solution to make a sensor node without maintenance if you just think on, on the vibration. Uh, which is using a big ship and transporting containers and you can harvest this uh, vibration from the ship and uh, monitor if your container is still on the ship or not anymore. Just just idea in this case to use uh, this uh, battery less um, device whatever. The thing is by thinking on energy harvesting it's it's always people think it's energy for free. Well, somehow the energy is for free, but um, we have to make some investment in transducer. And not only just the transducer, we have to calculate exactly what is the demand of the device in total when you are powering from energy harvesting. You want to make it very reliable, you want to make it autonomously, but you have to think on some measurement and some calculation. First of all, it's not enough only just to know what is the maximum demand. You have to know what is the demand when the processor is wake up and have to do a job of calculation something and the rest of the time is just in deep sleep mode. So in that time the energy consumption is extremely low and you don't need to put a lot of energy uh, in, in, in the storage. Another function it is also important to uh, uh, communicate this data. When you are communicating data by, by RF in in terms of uh, er, uh, TX transmission time, you have a different uh, energy consumption, but also, again, for a very short time. You have to know the peak currents. What is your peak current and how long? And then you can start to make energy harvesting calculation and think about which storage you will need and which kind of energy source you can decide to use. Uh, the second step, after you know that, okay, I can use like uh, indoor light, this is the most simple one, an indoor photovoltaic uh, module. Um, it's a good solution, but could be happen that you will need to use this uh, energy uh, and uh, to put this device not only in the room where it's light or outside, you will put somewhere in the basement where there's no light, it's dark, but maybe in the basement, in the salary, you have something like temperature difference. Then you can start to use TEG, thermoelectric generator, which you can harvest the temperature difference between this outside wall and inside wall, or um, you have a water pipe, which is maybe hot or maybe cold. It depends. You can use thermoelectricity, electricity, not only light. And the third step, the next step is to know how much energy I have to store where, because you can store it in a capacity bank, you can store it in super cap, in ultra cap, or in lithium rechargeable batteries. And the last one which you will need to use in just in case you want to unpack the box and you want to have the device already operated and you cannot deliver a pre-charged battery, you can have, you, have, you could put also a, a dry battery to just boot up the system and after this system have been booted up you don't need any more the battery ever because you will harvest different forms of energy non-electrical energy transformed with a transducer and use the sensor node totally autonomously by typical energy what you can harvest is something like by rf if you are uh, trying to harvest rf energy is the most weakest one and the most complicated one you have to be a good analog uh, designer or 
radio amateur, I will say, to try to harvest the RF energy. And the amount of energy is quite the most weakest one, but in long term, harvesting energy, it's also possible to make at least a very simple sensor node to operate. I will start better with uh, thinking about tem temperature, thermoelectric generation, or solar cell. This is the most used one in terms of uh, energy harvesting and can be quite easily realized. Today, the processor, um, I'm not talking about the uh, processor from your computer, but you can buy a processor like ARM Cortex M3 core base, which in deep sleep mode, they can go down to 100 nanoamp consumption, current consumption, which is extremely low. And it's a nightmare to measure that if you don't have a column counter. But it is possible to sti still uh, have the, uh, the processor awake. And only when you wake up the processor to make a calculation, his consumption can be between 1 milliamp to 10 milliamp, and then again in deep sleep mode. And such kind of application could make a lot of different sensors or uh, loggers, whatever, um, even a, a small um, ear, uh, um, Year uh, eight can be done with energy harvesting today if you are doing the right uh, design. We are also part of one uh, European com uh, committee um, uh, where we are um, in a founding project called Symphony. Virtual Electronic, we did make a small uh, chip, a small DC DC converter, which is in a small silicon, extremely, uh, extremely small. The rest of the electronic is mostly printed, so the the piezo element is uh, printed, the, the diodes are printed, the super cups are printed, and only our small silicon, of course, cannot be like so easy printed to make some smart silicon printed. Uh, we did make a small IC, and this IC supplied the voltage for the uh, smart board, which is, uh, can be uh, RF module or whatever. And the application, the use case are three different use cases. One of the use cases is one of the um, wind solar, uh, not solar, the wind uh, generator blade monitoring to don't um, kind of predictive maintenance to don't, before they're breaking, they give a signal. Another use case is the smart floor. Well, when you walk on the floor, it will also sensing if somebody is on the floor and give you also information where the people are working in the store or for alarm system. And the third solution, which is my favorite one, is the, the um, bike tube where it's monitoring the bike uh, pressure and temperature of your bike wire, bike tire. So this is a, a founded uh, project which is um, already done and it is uh, this year end. And uh, we are very successful. We are very happy that everything works like we did uh, estimated and uh, it was not uh, overriding the budget as well. And uh, right now they are already starting to be on the market, these devices. One of the devices is this uh, rotor blade monitor, which you can see here in this picture. I can talk about now. It's Eologix uh, who made this uh, sticker. It is stickered only just on the rotor blade. And it's give you the information to a, a, a router. They have a, a base station router in, in, a, in a smart, a small mesh network where before the blade is, is damaged. So after a while, the blades have been to change because um, uh, they have some cracks. And before they, they completely uh, break down and destroy the, the, the generator, everything, they must be changed. And in the past was just number by date, by date X, they install it. And by date X, they have to change it. Maybe it was, was good, but maybe it was already damaged. So they did not know. Now you have the possibility with the predictive maintenance to know exactly when you need to change these blades before it's breaking down or to stop the, uh, the generator. The smart floor, which is uh, also implemented inside of this uh, piece of wood, already in this uh, layer wood, it's uh, inside of this uh, uh, wood when you buy the click wood and you put on your floor. It can be monitored if somebody is in the room, like for presence sensor, or you can monitor how often people come in and come out of your store, or is somebody in the office or not in the office without having a possibility uh, to mount any uh, wired uh, system. It's making us a smash, uh, mesh network and communicate with only just one base station. And between each other, it's make a mesh network. And no need batteries, just enough to 
step on the floor and it's already uh, making beaconing and give you the information. The most nicest one, like I told before, this, this is the bike tube, which is uh, used for the e-bike. If you ride the e-bike, you can ride in Europe, especially in Germany. Uh, it's a maximum speed of 25 km per hour. And you don't want that your bike tube, so your bike tire, it's deflate because then you have uh, higher friction and your energy is not so good and your, your range will be less from your e-bike. Um, you want to have also no accident when, when you deflate the, the, the tube to, uh, and, and you have a, a problem. So uh, believe me, I had an accident with a deflating tube by 25 km per hour and this is not so funny. I would be happy if I would have that time already the tire pressuring monitoring system built in, which is inside of the tube already vulcanized. So you can just change it and you have a small application on your mobile phone or app and you can read your, your uh, temperature from your uh, bicycle tube or from the, from the pressure as well. And uh, Tubolita already is on the market. You can use these uh, devices without changing the battery. Well, if you crash completely, um, okay, then you will need a new tube, but that's, that's, that's life. So in the project, uh, also one of the importance was given that we are mostly more like 90% 90, 90% recyclable, so everything can be completely recycled. It's also very important for environment. You don't want to make uh, waste, to generate waste. Just uh, skipping the battery already, we make a, a big improvement to the environment that we don't waste batteries. And of course, um, also the, the production it is made in a, in a printed system, so also uh, the balance to the used carbon dioxide is also uh, important to be attention, so everything was made in the right way. The first, uh, I would say, energy harvesting device which you ever used it before, I guess it was your bicycle dynamo. Maybe you was not aware that already that was energy harvesting. Actually, you harvest the mechanical energy. But I remember when I was in my childhood, when I used the dynamo, already you can feel it that you have to push more and more the bicycle because the efficiency was not that good. Today, if you buy a bicycle, they have an a axe dynamo and uh, on the axis directly. And this is much more uh, efficient, like this uh, old version. But anyhow, that was the first energy harvesting device, which you maybe you don't pay attention, but it was already energy harvesting in your life. Today, I did uh, make a, a small um, um, request to a customer, which I uh, know that they use it uh, energy harvesting, and I asked them to, uh, to provide me what was the lowest energy, what was the highest energy provided, and I don't talk about power plants like uh, megawatt uh, solar power plants. I want to talk about devices which was operated from environment, and interesting was that the lowest power was something like 550 uh, microwatt, and the highest was something like uh, 200 milliwatt for a meteorological station in the mountains. But the most impressive was this from uh, Fraunhofer Institute where I found that, that they make a system on chip with a solar cell and they put that inside of the window and they can, uh, in the vacuum in between the two blades in this uh, frame, and they can power by the indoor or outdoor light. And they have also a, um, a sensor, an acceleration sensor. You can know it is open or closed, this uh, window. And uh, you have also the, the temperature additional, the light intensity as well. It was very, very nice to see this uh, kind of application, which is running completely autonomously, almost forever, until you will not break the glass. By the way, we have also a sensor for that. And uh, that was the most impressive one, what I saw, which will come next on the market. Who knows, maybe one day you will have in your home. Another nice, interesting uh, um, application was not last year, two years before on the CES in, in Las Vegas, when uh, L'Oreal did uh, come out with a new sensor, which is just stick it to your fingernail and is measuring during the day the UV light, which is uh, getting on your skin from the outside sun. And on the evening, you can read with your mobile phone using the NFC protocol to um, uh, optimize your sun blocker for the next day, reading your, your, your skin uh, uh, type and giving you information which kind of sun blocker you have to use. And this is energy harvesting, totally just a small sticker on your finger and using the UV light and, and the out light and harvesting the one small sticker. Impressive how uh, 
cosmetic company can make electronics for energy harvesting. For industrial application, uh, this is also from ABB a, a sensor node measuring the temperature in a, in a big plant. You have no need to uh, access to grid to put any wires. It makes also a mesh network and you can communicate with this uh, temperature sensor and you can read the, uh, the temperature from different locations where you don't have to climb there and change the battery or to put wire ad additional. This is something already very robust or ro ro working already in, in, in uh, industrial plants. A nice, uh, very interesting uh, information what I, I found on, on uh, Professor uh, uh, Rogers from uh, University of Illinois in Chicago. Uh, he and uh, his team, they build um, a mesh which is woven directly on the heart. And when the heart is beating, it's generating enough energy that you can power on, on a pacemaker. There are some pictures from prototype. It's, uh, uh, copyright of the Mr. Professor Rogers on the University of Illinois and this is something which maybe in the future some pacemaker uh, people who doesn't need a second surgery to change the battery can use this kind of technology as soon the medical release will be done. Virtual electronic providing for uh, making this kind of first steps in energy harvesting development we have these design kits this is a the design kit called Glenergy because you can harvest here thermoelectric, you can harvest solar, you can put piezo, you can put uh, even inductive uh, harvester transducer, and you have the possibility to, uh, to store in different storage, like capacity banks, super cap is on it, it's a lithium ion uh, rechargeable batteries on the board, and on the smart board, the processor is using also ARM Cortex M4 core, and you have also RF module, you can have a dongle, you can communicate and uh, make your own code, have an e-ink display to not waste energy to see if you want to make something visual. It's a development kit which you can use for multiple, uh, I would say, tests for, for yourself, just in case you want to um, make some designs in energy harvesting. If you want to have in touch with me, if you want to have some more information about inductors, EMC, whatever, please use YouTube put on hashtag AskLoran, you will find some nice videos and I hope you enjoyed today the information about energy harvesting and that's all about energy harvesting today. So, Loran, thank you very, very much for your interesting presentation. I really was excited to be in the background and to listen to you and yeah, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Pleasure of my side. Thank you so much, Marcus, to be here and hope you enjoy it. So yeah, then it's time for your questions. I saw that there were some questions coming in already. And as said in the beginning, if we are not possible to answer all your questions within this live webinar, we will answer them later on. <clears throat> Loran, so first question, would it be possible to harvest mobile phone radio energy? Yes, this is possible, not in the moment when you're in standby, but mm -hmm. when you are, um making a phone call, your mobile phone mm -hmm. is already um, transmitting, already mm -hmm. have a one between one to and two watt uh, radio transmission. And you could catch this energy with a small um, resonance circuit and, and harvest whatever sensor. But mm -hmm. this is not so good idea because in that moment, you will take some energy from your mobile phone uh, transmitter, which have to transmit mm -hmm. to the base station. Ah, okay. And it means that your mobile phone need to push more energy and maybe yeah. your, your, your uh, uh, coverage is not so good, and then you take an additional energy away, ah, yeah, okay. it's not a good idea. Even, even if you're living close to the mobile base station mm -hmm. and you build a big Yagi antenna to harvest this energy, mm -hmm. don't do that. It's not good. It's not, not, not the best thing because it's possible, mm -hmm. but I would not recommend. Yeah. <laughs> maybe you will get some problems there. For sure. <laughs> Okay, so next question. What is the best storage element? A capacitor maybe or also battery? Thank you for this difficult question. Um, it's not so easy to answer. It depends because when you are harvesting um, small amount of energy and you recall this energy very fast, you mm -hmm. can work with a capacity bank. Mm -hmm. If you want to store energy for a long time, the capacity is not the best option. You can try a super cap, which is a little bit longer like a normal capacity. It can mm -hmm. be charged very fast. 
it's discharged not so fast like a, a standard capacitor, but if you want to store for really long time, yeah. then it's a battery. The lithium okay. phosphate, the lithium uh, iron, uh, lithium ion, whatever, it's the most better option to long time mm -hmm. and the density is much higher. So ah, okay, yeah. you cannot say which is the best one. It depends on the application if you want to have a short energy storage or long time energy storage. Yeah. Okay, Loran, thank you very much. Then next and I think uh, also the last question for now, what is the maximum amount of energy that can be harvested? Ooh. Well, <clears throat> If you think on a solar megawatt plant, you can imagine a, a field yeah. in <laughs> northern part of Sahara completely with solar plants. They will produce so much energy that yeah. we can supply the electricity for entire Europe and we can turn off all the atomic plants. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> uh, that would be the best solution. It was, by the way, a project, but it was canceled. But in my opinion, if you talk about energy harvesting for devices, if I take my presenter like here, if I'm using this present in my hand, I have temperature, I produce mm -hmm. energy. Normally, I could produce enough energy for my TV remote control mm -hmm. to make the LED to transmit volume up down, only just using my temperature. Okay. Additionally, yeah. if I'm a little bit more nervous like here and I start to, to make with my mm -hmm. hand movement, I can also make a small uh, mechanical um, generator inside, like the yeah. mechanical watch, it was the yeah. energy harvesting of mechanics, not electronic. Yeah. But it yeah. could be also a solution for such small device. This is, this is depends always on application. You cannot say minimum is or maximum energy. I would say it depends what you move and how long you move. Mm -hmm. uh, think about if you have a heat pipeline where mm -hmm. it's hot water is transmitting all the time and yeah. you want to measure what is the, the efficiency of transmitting and you want to monitor that you can put just a thermoelectric generator on it and that's it and yeah. it works so yeah i would say everything what is more like one watt is already not anymore so really energy harvesting okay. you have to think low power and high power okay so then Loran, thank you very much for the answer and also for the yeah, presentation and your time today. You're welcome. It was, a, it was a really a pleasure to have you here. It was a pleasure on my side. Thank you so much. So then, uh, yeah, we are already finished with our webinar. Stay tuned with also other, other webinars. And um, yeah, hopefully we will, uh, can welcome you to our next webinar. And then take care. Have a good time. Bye. See you next time. Bye.